Hi everyone, today uh, we are going to be discussing about um, how you can build for justice. Uh, we have always uh, been talking about like the ethos of building for public goods, for being able to build, build for people uh, in the Web3 space. And I think the ethos of blockchain is the fact that uh, um, you enable this technology to solve multiple problems. And definitely justice is, I think, right at the top because uh, there are, at the moment, uh, as we grow, as we scale, um, as an ecosystem, as an economy, as a whole, I think there are so many parts of justices that are like fragmented, that are, um, you know, that, that are uh, slow, justice is slow in a lot of uh, countries, um, not just developing, but, uh, uh, you know, even the developed ecosystems as well. And I feel like, me personally, I think this is a great kind of public good that you can aim to build for. So I'm very aligned with the subject and uh, today that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, a quick introduction of me. I've also put like some slides. Um, my name is Gyan and I'm a developer advocate with the Starknet Foundation. Uh, I'm also one of the co-founders of a community called the Phoenix Guild, which is focused on diversity and education in this space. I am based in India and I can speak a bunch of different languages. If you do want to follow me, um, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I don't post uh, any controversial stuff, so feel free to you know do that. And today, um, I want to start by talking about um, how can we build systems that are compliant. So before that, maybe I'll quick, quickly run through as to what will be the agenda. The agenda is going to be how can you build stuff right off the bat that is compliant. Uh, and I'm going to, I have a short demo that I've prepared, which is on solidity. Uh, and I'm going to like just uh, run through that uh, simple smart contract and then I'm also be talking about uh, what are the pain points that are there as of now I know Sneha uh, talked about that in a previous talk as well uh, but just in terms of building what could be the potential pain points and how can we solve for that okay let's go so the first scenario that we have in mind is, uh, you know, a simple, a simple scenario where you could potentially think about justice as just the first steps is um, dispute resolution, right? And a good example of dispute resolution is escrow. Uh, a lot of times we want to exchange products, we want to exchange assets from one person to another and that's when um, we get into an escrow, right, a uh, sort of escrow where uh, uh, either a third party holds your funds or your assets and then releases them when the conditions are met. So let's look at the first scenario where we have two parties, uh, just in e just as in every cryptography system, it's Alice and Bob who strike again. So let's say Alice and Bob um, are in escrow and there's no dispute resolution required at this point, right? Life is chill and all is good. So how would you go about building something like this, right? Um, an escrow uh, in the Web3 context. So you will write and deploy an escrow smart contract whatever is your platform tooling language of choice, right, you use that and it has a simple logic wherein the smart contract can take in uh, the funds or the assets of party A and upon successful uh, completion of uh, uh, or there is a proof that is submitted that the, uh, the action or the transfer is successfully completed, that's when the funds or the uh, underlying logged assets get released to party B. So the way you would think about constructing your solution is that you write a smart contract, which is an escrow contract, which has the logic, uh, which will accept a certain type of proof basis, the domain that you're building for, right? And uh, which will act as the intermediary between party A and party B. So if you think about this, it's more like this is where we bring in the, you know, idea of removing human intermediaries and trusting the code itself. Because when you write this logic that will disburse the funds upon accept, uh, upon completion, you're already, you're making this entire logic public and transparent on chain. I'll go through the smart contract in just a bit as well. And then the second step is, 
um, you know, then this is the process now where party A sends their funds to the contract. Let's say this is like a monetary sort of, you know, transfer that is happening. So that escrow in that context. So party A sends funds which are stored in the contract instead of a third party having access to those funds. And uh, upon completion, there is a proof or there is a call, whatever you trigger that to the smart contract. And uh, there is no dispute. So, you know, like I said, life is chill, like Alice and Bob are nice people. They're like, I like you give me money, like, you know, I'm good and I, I gave you whatever asset you wanted. Uh, so payment is now disbursed via the smart contract to party B, right? Uh, this is a great system, but this is a best case scenario, right? This is an ideal scenario where there is no dispute, you know, there is no issue and everything is smooth. Uh, but when you think about uh, but general our normal life is not like that uh, people are generally more unhappy uh, you know it's likely that there is a fight or there is you know there is an issue um, there there are different expectations there are different perceptions so that's where your um, justice system uh, kind of comes into picture which is already in place that uh, justice system is there for for things for uh, scenarios where things don't go right so in this scenario, uh, in case there is a dispute, if you write a smart contract like this in today's day, you are not ready for a dispute, right? Uh, your platform is only supporting the best case scenario, the ideal scenario, which is what most of us are building today in Web3. We are always building for ideal scenarios, right? We are building for higher APYs. We are building for uh, successful transactions. We are building uh, for a situation where the uh, you know where the network doesn't fail but this is this is not the uh, this is not this uh, this is not the uh, ideal scenario and it's never going to be right there are always going to be problems there are always going to be issues and that's why i titled this section to be how can we build systems that are compliant right off the bat now let's say that you uh, are familiar with like hey like there is you know a likelihood of like dispute resolution how do you go about this right uh, this your step one, which is creating a contract or thinking about it from a contract perspective, remains the same, right? Now this is your smart contracts are are nothing but similar to your legal contracts, which are um, actually pieces of code that are replicating what you have in the legal context, right? There is slight they are slightly different because you have to think about them in the context of a working network, which is the blockchain network. And in a legal scenario, you cover a lot of different uh, edge, case, edge cases. However, in the, in the blockchain scenario, you can cover most of these edge cases, but probably not all. You will st still require some other plugins, some other form of human consensus for some of the things to um, you know, happen properly. So your step one remains the same in this case. However, in your step two, not everything is good, right? So there is a dispute that is raised. So um, I'm sure Sneha also mentioned the different uh, components of dispute resolution. Uh, I haven't put this as a four things that, you know, one after, one after the other are on the only components, but this is like a rough idea of how would you resolve this dispute? Right. So, of course, someone will raise the dispute There's between party A and party B. One of them is not happy with this. And once someone raises the dispute, then you need to find a common third, a common party or uh, an unbiased third party, not a common, but an unbiased third party who will help resolve this dispute. So you select a judge who will, you know, look at the dispute, who will figure out what are the scenarios of this dispute, and they will come to a conclusion whether the dispute is in favor of party A or party B. So your second step is selecting the judges. The third, you submit evidences around, you know, um, supporting one party, other party, both of them submit evidences, etc. And then finally, looking at the evidences and, you know, some elements around that, your dispute is resolved. The third step is uh, settling this on chain because now that you have a smart contract that has the logic for this entire escrow, you want to make sure that your settlement of the dispute is also on chain. So then you have the entire track record of what happened, uh, what was the dispute associated with this particular task or this particular process, and how was this issue, dispute settled. So for this, just to show an example, I have a simple uh, smart contract that I wrote, and I'm going to just showcase that. This is like, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. 
okay so this is a simple solidity smart contract like i said it doesn't matter whether you have like you know whether you use solidity whether you use rust or whatever programming language of your choice you can use any tooling any chain uh, or any any interface however what you want to make sure is that when whatever chain you use it should not um, it should not affect the user experience the users shouldn't feel like they are actually interacting with a blockchain you should make user friendly um, systems user experience such that whatever it it looks more like a form to them but it's actually you know uh, the data behind is actually sitting on chain so in this case as a builder as a developer how would you approach this right so you have an escrow contract and this has the agreement a structure like i mentioned an agreement is like your legal agreement a smart contract is like your legal agreement which is um, you know just replicating the terms and uh, conditions that are there as part of your legal agreements that we have as of today so we have bob and alice both of who ha- are identified by blockchain addresses and then we have an arbitrator in this in this situation uh, and we have a judge as well for dispute resolution actually i will uh, oh sorry let me go through this contract first which is a similar contract but that one is like the updated one so this is the one that is before you start writing compliant stuff right so when you write a simple smart contract you have alice and bob you have an arbitrator you have the amount and then you know whether Alice sent the money and Bob sent the money or you know whatever assets etc right so you have Bob in which is a boolean true or false and you have Alice in which is again true or false and all of the agreements you are storing on chain so once you create a new agreement uh, there is so this is like a buyer and seller the escrow for buyer and seller and you have some conditions like the buyer and the seller can't be the same uh, and once you create that you basically put in um, all of the different things that you have the address of bob address of alice who actually is the arbitrator so in this case it's going to be the person who's calling this contract they are the arbitrator and the amount so in in general the arbitrator would be the platform itself right so what is the platform where you are coming to actually do the escrow and then you have the amount uh, that uh, that is for the selling the product and then right now bob in and alice in are false and false so and then the uh, the the buyer deposits the funds whoever is interested in picking up whoever is like part of on the other side of the escrow and then you check whether um, you know who is it is it bob or is it alice like pastes the id uh, and uh, um, you set accordingly that this is true whether it is this party or that party who's the buyer and uh, um, once that is done you have the complete function which is basically like uh, you know that this person has paid and now that the funds are successfully into the contract so now we can complete this function and we can um, deliver the assets to the other person so this is like your basic body of stuff um, if you see which i did not expect this contract to have some level of compliance which is they have a refund function that means they are thinking that there could be potentially a dispute where they would refund the funds but how will this dis- dispute be raised has not been thought about right now if you want to think about this and make this a bit more compliant then you can have it have like a few more elements like whether a dispute has been raised in this particular agreement or not so you also record the fact whether the dispute has been raised or not and then you can uh, select a judge which is you know who will help sort of um you know resolve the situation uh, and uh, um you can then add those elements to this so now you are you are thinking about this in a more holistic perspective that uh, you are if there is a dispute then you are recording it and you are adding uh, identifiers who have helped uh, resolve the dispute and if the dispute is not there then th- these things will these uh, storage elements will not matter for that agreement anyways but now you are taking that next step and making sure that this exists right so um so i just put like a simple function which is like register dispute and maybe to add something to this you can have like a id or something that will identify uh, what this particular uh, what is the task id and then let's say in, in this like i'll just put one um, 
just so it doesn't error and then you can send the same task id uh, and you can basically identify uh, this entire agreement using the task id so you have to create a mapping that will actually create a mapping between your uint and your agreement so you're mapping every task to the agreement so you can basically retrieve the agreement back right so let's do this and then um, i'm going to store this agreement map just for now um, you will actually have to generate these task ids as a number but just for uh, like demo purposes i'm going to say that what's this one okay so i have now created a map which is mapping every task id to an agreement and now i can just retrieve this particular task or in this case since my agreement it's only agreement of one i can just now retrieve the dispute element of this and say that is dispute equal to true so ideally it would be like id that you map the id and then you take the entire agreement and you set the dispute to true now in this in this case again you can um, you know set the judge you and id and address of the judge so avoid confusion right and then you add like logic this was according to judge decision right so this is like literally if you think about it i have used the same contract and i have just added two more functions that are helping me in a way to record dispute resolution right i'm not doing the entire dispute resolution all of the components here but i'm making sure that just by adding these two like very small functions right maybe this logic would be like two three more lines it won't be that much but i'm making sure that now this contract is actually compliant with some sort of like dispute resolution or this contract has an element of justice added to it because if you think about the hacks that are happening these days if you think about the issues that are happening these days right we have code so that we don't have to trust people but we are somewhat going back again and again in that cycle where we are not able to trust the code because the code is incomplete so we are getting people to resolve the dispute for us and it's not working and there is no track of how the dispute also is being resolved but now that we know that like things can be actually uh, you know added just by adding some small components to your existing contracts like i added these functions you know in, in like less than a minute or 2 minutes right and maybe i have to decide the logic that bases every use case how a judge could potentially resolve the dispute that's how i will add more logic as to whether the funds will be reverted bases what the judge describes and all of that but this is a very simple way that you can actually write stuff to your existing add stuff to your existing smart contract to make it more compliant um now i also want to show a little bit about the other elements that are involved over here for example once we re register the dispute we need to actually raise the dispute so you can use existing platforms actually i have a slide for that ah yes i don't know if it is clear okay it's not bad yeah so uh, the first thing is yeah, like your uh, apart from this uh, cycle like apart from these elements of like building your logic in smart contract um, there are also some other elements like i said services and toolings that needs to be plugged in in order to make this a holistic application so the first is being able to um, use a dispute resolution model so you can use a pre existing model or you can make your own dispute resolution model so you can use say sneha's resolution d right okay so okay connected to some test wallet okay perfect uh, okay um 
as of now uh, i'm just going to show like let's say like if you want to initiate a dispute you can actually go to a dispute resolution platform and you can fill up the different details like you have the id and all of that right now this is in the context of nft art i believe but this could potentially be extended to anything right like how you received a task id for your escrow you could just put in the same so all of the elements are talking to each other and then you have the summary of the dispute the case details and all of that you attach evidence which is then uh, could be stored on uh, um, you know decentralized storage and then you can submit this so once you submit this you get a footprint on chain and you can then also make a call to your existing main logic smart contract and this footprint can also be registered there so this is an easy process of being able to kind of you know plug in a dispute resolution uh, model and then even for judge selection um you can have a bunch of judges uh, that you have stored like different addresses who are willing to participate um and then you can build like a vrf which is like a random uh, verifiable random uh, function for selecting judges and recording the judges as a um like uh, recording it on smart contract or um you can uh, um you know basically record their decision you, you can record their decision when selecting them as a yes or no depending on the use case or uh, you upload a file which you know has their verbal decision you can extract the element via nlp and then you can decide how you want to store it in the smart contract maybe you store a cid of the file onto the smart contract or something or the decision itself if the logic is fairly simple if it's just a yes or no you can code that in the smart contract just like the escrow one and you can use um, very interesting elements like actually any oracle uh, one of the popular ones being chainlink we also have the pragma oracle um, which we use very often in starknet and uh, we have pit which also has different integration so most of these oracles do provide a vrf functionality and you don't need to write anything from scratch on your own you can just uh, pick the vrf from there and you can you know use that to um, generate your verifiable random number again basis your use case you can categorize your judges for different problem statements you have different judges so you only pick from certain pool but make sure that you know just basic etiquette your pool is diverse you have you know uh, people who are not likely to be biased for a uh, for or against a particular decision and um, um, yeah evidence management uh, uh, again this can also be automated by technology so you can actually store it in decentralized storage platforms ipfs uh, you know um, filecoin whatever whatever is your preference now the last thing that i wanted to cover is basically um, that it's not super easy to work with dispute resolution like right now when we are talking about escrow um, maybe in a crypto context it's uh, it's very it's very easy, very easy to visualize how this product will function like uh, by crypto like i mean both fungible tokens and non fungible tokens like nfts they are they also are stored um, you know on the blockchain your fungible tokens erc20 all of that is also stored on chain so it is easy to work with them and it is easy to visualize how this product will function however when you think about physical assets it's a bit harder to track you know ownership of physical assets is much harder to track than digital assets of course and this is where i think newer concepts like rwas uh, can real world assets can really make a huge difference uh, the idea of real world assets is not sort of converting real world assets into like digital assets like you can't convert a car into like a picture of car right the experience is not the same like if you own a picture of car it's not the same as owning a car right uh, however what we can do is we can have a digital we can create a digital footprint of these physical assets and being able to track these digital footprints will make dispute resolution much much easier um, if you think about it especially like in today's date there is so much land dispute going on like across the globe i don't think it's like a, a news like uh, you know it's not something new but even being able to kind of work on that is hard like people are trying to be like hey real estate management using blockchain but honestly there is no footprint of like these you know lands or real estates that exist on chain or 
off chain digitally for that matter right there are so many land records that are still physical on paper etc etc and all the same thing with other uh, important physical assets so i think having that digital footprint uh, of physical assets uh, using rwa solutions is a great first step in in that in that space and then we can think about like oh like now that we have a digital footprint like can we add some dispute resolution using some of the techniques uh, and the you know technologies that i mentioned earlier so um, would we definitely i would definitely encourage people to uh, look at rwa solutions what are people doing how are people tackling this problem who are the organizations institutions that are actually interested in making this happening making this happen and then kind of work with them if that's you know the space that you're interested in um this is where also uh, ipfs can make a huge difference where you can store certain important information as which is um heavy in storage so it will be you know costly to store on chain but you can store that on decentralized storage uh, because there is a documentation associated with like real world assets is a lot and if you have to migrate that digitally to make sure that the footprint of that exists forever then i think decentralized storage is like the solution that i would go for so definitely some like intersections uh, of that and uh, uh, filecoin here as well so um, yeah this uh, this is like one of the pain points that i think that kind of stops dispute resolution uh, to be scalable in in a way so um, these are like things that i could help and um, i just want to summarize by saying that uh, um it's like i mentioned it's very uh, right now the solutions and the products that we are building are very siloed are very uh, focused on just thinking about hey like here is a here is one particular problem associated with defi or associated with uh, you know um, uh, some other uh, domain that i'm solving for but we are not looking at the bigger picture that is what happens once the parties come into this ecosystem and they actually face a dispute or how do you build justice models around uh, you know people themselves who are involved in this ecosystem uh, and we have to start looking at it from that perspective because honestly from a technology perspective it's not that difficult to build this solution but it's just the change in mindset i think that needs to come that oh like we uh, we have to also think about people that are interacting with this ecosystem and that's where i think like justice just the overall umbrella of justice kind of makes sense and solutions around that space so yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for having me and thanks neha for inviting me to the talk <laughs>